Odijin a Kasmuning, Nosanan Gaye, Wegwisamen Gaye, Wendijishid Manido. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bujo Nindana Wei Maganag. Now, for those of you whose Ojibwe has gotten a little rusty, <laughs> I will provide a translation. I said, I invoked <coughs> the Trinity, of course, uh, in the prayer, but then uh, I greeted you uh, by saying hello, but also I said to you that you are all my relatives. And this is a respectful way of greeting for the people of the land, the people who are around here. You um, very nicely uh, supplied a stained glass window with uh, the theme of my sermon there for me. So check out the window if you haven't. Back when this church started, undoubtedly, most people would have not needed a translation because there was a kind of communication back and forth between the people of the land and then the people coming from elsewhere that allowed them to speak in each other's language. Let's pray that that day comes back some, sometime soon. I want to begin by telling you a story. I served as the priest in charge of a small congregation in rural Wisconsin about 45 miles away from the city of La Crosse. I had to drive to La Crosse to see my folks in a hospital, so I did it a lot, about once a week, and I did it for five years. I did not like driving through this small town on the way, Holman. You had to slow down, and Holman was one of those places that managed to build itself in such a way that the buildings obscured all the natural beauty in the area. All you could see was these kind of, what I thought, ugly uh, strip malls and not too attractive houses and buildings. It was not my favorite place. I served for five years and when I finished, I had to leave, but I was sad to go. And I was grieving, leaving this congregation and the people I loved. And I had to drive to Oregon, where my new parish was. But I decided to stop by at Duluth, Minnesota, where my parents were living at the time. And so I drove through Holman, what I thought would be the last time. And even though I was feeling bad, I consoled myself by saying to myself, at least I'll never have to drive through Holman again. I drove home. It took about five, six hours. I got home, and my mother met me at the door, and without even saying hello, she said to me, I've been meaning to ask you these five years, have you ever heard of a town called Holman? I said, I was, well, I was just about to let loose about Holman. And then she said, it's named after your great-grandfather. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a little bit of information will do to change a place for you. Suddenly, this place that was uh, a, a speed bump, uh, mostly for me, uh, and a not-too-attractive speed bump, had, was changed and enchanted into a place of wondrous mystery. I made sure that I visited again. I have forced my children to go to the museum. I've wondered if I shouldn't let the Chamber of Commerce know that I was in town to give them a chance to speak to one of the descendants of the founding father of that community. Well, so a little bit of information, a little change of perspective can make a place that is mundane, perhaps even unattractive, it can change it into a place of enchantment. And I use this story to introduce our gospel lesson because I think that all of us today are on a trip to Holman with me. 
And I would like us to, to approach the gospel with that story and mind and that feeling in our hearts. The gospel is a favorite for the church over the centuries. People have found multiple layers of meaning in it, some of them obvious, some of them not so obvious. But it is best understood, I think, especially in light of our, the time in this parish and what we're talking about today in the time of Canada, it is best to see it in light of some very important teaching by the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his coming again are unique events in human history. They have no parallels. They have no thing that can even approach them in terms of their importance and significance. However, he said that there is an aspect of them that is unique and special, and that is that they uncover, they reveal, they disclose, they unveil God's presence in the everyday things of our lives. So even though it's a unique moment in the history of creation, it is a moment that helps us understand and see an underlying reality in life and in creation. So we come to see something about our lives that we've never understood before. What this story does, this story of Jesus, it reveals an enchantment, it unveils a mystery that is present in every day and in every way. And there is perhaps no other gospel story that better portrays this aspect of the, of the reading. We are apt to think of the details of our lives, our family life, our being together, the love that we have for each other as important, but not necessarily miraculous. This story reveals something very special. It is a unique, a unique uh, miracle that Jesus performs. But the commentary by the church elders over the centuries has said that what's even more significant is the way in which Jesus unveils the presence of God in the everyday aspects of our lives. The way that he enchants our relationships with each other, the way that he reveals the sacredness and the power of our lives together. This is a significant thing. We are about to go to the altar, and at the altar we are to bless bread and a cup. And we make those mundane things, those everyday things, into something special. But the reverse is also true. In these special acts, we reveal the sacredness of that which is every day. We reveal the way in which God not only enchants those special things that we set apart, but those things which are handled and seen every single day. God wishes us to understand the enchantment, the miraculous presence that surrounds the most normal and everyday aspects of our lives. There is an Ojibwe word, makajawin, makajawin, makajawin. It is a wonderful word. It means miraculous. It describes something that's miraculous but it is most often used to describe mundane things. It is a word that is used to try to help us to understand that even those things which are so normal and everyday 
the forgettable is using the word makajwin, the forgettable is the unforgettable. The mundane is the sacred. The everyday is miraculous. Now, this is something that God wishes, wishes us to understand about our lives. This is something that God hopes that our souls and our minds will penetrate and absorb. And to a certain extent, the special time that we set apart in church is not a time apart, but a time that introduces us to the reality of all the rest of time. We gather on the first day of the week. The first thing that we do is to consecrate, but also to appreciate that which is to come throughout the week. Canada is on its own little trip to Homan right now because what you are, uh, I, I would say, prophetic enough to show in your stained glass window is something that Canada is beginning to understand. It was for a long time thought by most people in Canada that the first peoples of Canada, the indigenous people of Canada, would someday disappear either die off or be absorbed into the rest of the body politic. And even though there has been much pain over the past 100 years, we are beginning to understand a history that is uh, much longer, much deeper, and much more wondrous than that. Canada is beginning to understand the gift that First Nation peoples and the Inuit and Métis are to the life of Canada. Now, I'm going to say more about that in a talk I'm going to give afterwards. So this is product placement right in the midst of a sermon. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to get you to come and listen to what I have to say in a more fulsome way later on. But what I want to say to all of us and to help us to understand that we might be apt to see only the pain and that which is the story on the surface. God, I think, is trying to reveal something else, that in this pain, there is a path to goodness, to hope, to peace, to community. And that's what I wish to emphasize and I will talk about later. I want to close by talking about this parish 175 years, and I congratulate you for that. It's a wonderful thing, a beautiful place, a place where all kinds of good things happen. But as Paul points out in our, first le in our second lesson, there is, I think, an aspect of parish life that needs to have attention. We're apt to look at the spectacular, the wonderful, the the place where we use incense and bells and have a choir and beautiful music. All these things are great, and those are the things that we most often associate with church. But here, Paul is trying to underline those everyday aspects of life, the mundane, the things that are most often forget, for, forgotten. Now, I have to say, as I get closer and closer to retirement, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is not going to any more meetings. I get meeting to death. And I, well, I'm sure your priest would never complain about such a thing as this. But meetings are not the, the, the greatest aspect of life. They tend to be mundane. They tend to be everyday. They tend to be pedestrian. But but what this lesson is trying to get us to understand, it's trying to enchant the everyday, to re-enchant our perspective on life, to begin to see the mysterious and wondrous presence of God in those things which seem the most ordinary and mundane. This parish 
is a string of spectacular events that have happened over 175 years. But it is also, and this is the message of today, it is the mundane acts of faithful people acting in the name of God, doing things that no one else wanted to do, but doing them because they needed to be done. It is the simple acts of membership, of belonging, of caring, of acting. It is in these moments that the wondrous and miraculous presence of God is made clear. As we approach our 175 years, <coughs> let us rejoice in the power and presence of God, not just in the spectacular, but in the mundane as well. For truly God has been with us as we have gone from these moments and as we now move towards the glory of God and the second coming of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen.